All the things that we consider important about how we present ourselves in a face-to-face -face or in-person business meeting or a speaking engagement, or maybe an instruction environment, I'm teaching a class or a workshop, things like, do I like what I'm wearing? And does my hair look okay? And does my glasses match my belt? Stuff like that remains the same if I'm now having those same conversations remotely or over video conference. But there's now an added technology layer on top of that conversation and we have to pay attention to that technology layer for two important reasons. One is I might be really, really comfortable walking into a room, shaking hands, commanding the audience and I don't want that confidence or that comfort to get lost just because now I'm doing it over my computer. I don't want to be worried about the technology or obsessing about it or feeling like it's getting in the way of me being able to naturally be myself or communicate. The second thing though is that I might be a great communicator and come in with all that confidence, but if I haven't paid attention to that technology layer, then I risk inadvertently and unintentionally doing things that could get in the way of my audience receiving my message. And now they'll be distracted because the technology is working against me instead of for me. Video conferencing is not really rocket science. Today I'm going to share with you three really simple things that if you can lock these down, your next video conference will go off without a hitch, you will be the most awesome you can be, and the technology will not get in your way. Let's go. Now one kind of preface to this whole thing is we're all used to video conferencing in some way or another right now with FaceTime or YouTube or Instagram or Facebook or Snapchat or TikTok or whatever. So people are going to be really forgiving of weird connections and poor sound quality and anything that isn't necessarily quote unquote perfect, people are going to be okay with. So don't obsess with trying to get to some ideal that isn't necessarily going to be realistic. My guidance though is the more informal or casual your situation, maybe that's how you can treat your video conferencing. So if you've got a small team that you meet with and you've got a really casual, easy relationship with them and they don't care if you get into your next meeting walking down the street with busy road distractions around you and on your phone and moving around, then that's cool. Show up and do it that way. That's no problem. For the rest of this video though, we're going to be looking at it from a perspective of creating a more ideal situation that we have a little bit more control over. For those situations where you definitely wanna be more confident that how you're showing up on the other side of the screen is in your very best light. So first thing we'll talk about is composition. Composition is how you fit into the frame of your video conference, of the screen of the person on the other side of your video conference. A couple points with that. Ideally, you're being captured from the chest up or maybe collarbone up. Your head is in the middle and you're being captured so that your head is really in the top half, maybe the top third uh, of your screen. Now included in the composition is anything else in the screen that isn't you. So your background. Avoid doing important video conferencing in you know, your messy bedroom or an unusual room like the bathroom or outside if there's constantly things going on around you that can distract from you. Remember, anything that distracts from you distracts from you. So there's not a hard rule about this. You don't need to be in front of a blank wall. You can see I've got several things going on behind me, but they stay the same. And after a moment or two of you kind of being curious about anything, you are able to come right back to having a focus on me and on my message. And that's what you want. Now, some video conferencing apps like Zoom actually allow you to use your own background, which can be really fun and interesting in certain circumstances for certain audiences. For instance, this is pretty cool for a minute. And then it's kind of fascinating in its distraction because the algorithms can only find the edges of my body so quickly. So if I'm moving around, it's kind of weird and splotchy and all of this can become really distracting really quickly. So again, under certain circumstances, this can be really fun and approach some humor to the whole situation, which can be really valuable. On the other hand, sometimes it can distract from you and your presentation and the things that you want. So choose your own adventure, but know that those things are options for you. Ideally, you're able to position yourself so that your camera is slightly above eye level. As I'm looking at you, my camera is actually right there. It lines up with about the middle of my forehead. This is gonna capture you in kind of your best angle. Now, a really common issue with composition is raised when we use our laptops for video conferencing and they're on a desk or a table, which makes great sense when we're working and typing, but can really cause some issues when the camera is below our face. You can see that I've got a lot of weird ceiling stuff going on. I'm kind of way down in a corner, so that's not a great look compositionally for me. 
and the lighting is weird. You're seeing weird shadows on my face. You're kind of looking up my nose. It's just not the best look. In fact, if I just make this adjustment, you could see the difference between when I'm looking slightly above eye level at the camera and when I'm back down on my desk. Some of the same composition issues are raised if I'm sitting comfortably with the laptop on my lap. That's convenient for working, but it's not my best look as I frame inside the camera. Beyond that, every time I move or make an adjustment with my legs or just get more comfortable, the camera moves and because it's not on a stable solid surface, I'm kind of taking my audience with a ride with me every time that I move. Again, not an ideal situation for video conferencing. One easy thing you can do is just set it up on top of some books, reposition your screen, and now your composition is just how you might want it to be. Okay, so we talked about composition, how you fit inside the frame that your audience will be seeing you in. Second really important point to lock down is lighting. Ideally, you want your lighting to be behind and above your camera, not behind and above you, but behind and above your camera. Natural daylight is awesome. So if you've got a window in the space you'll be in, kind of the bigger the better, it will fill them with light, bounce off the walls and the ceiling, and really bring a lot of light into your entire composition, which is great. That's what you want. Do avoid having the window behind you. Now this is the kind of thing that we risk if the light is behind me instead of behind the camera. I am kind of lost in shadow, my features are lost, but there's a big bright light blowing out the rest of the screen. This is distracting for your audience and makes it difficult to see a lot of your facial expressions and the things that make video conferencing ideal. All right, so we talked about composition and lighting. The last thing we'll talk about is sound. Sound is actually really important because all the other things can be on point, but if nobody can hear you or they're distracted by things going on with your sound, it can really get in the way. So a couple ways to approach sound. Now this is what it sounds like coming from my computer's microphone. I have an iMac Pro and you can hear that it's a little bit more echoey. It's maybe capturing a little bit more of the ambient sounds of the room. So if I were in a busy office space or something, this could be a little bit more of a problem, but there's nothing wrong with this. It sounds fine. Nobody on the other end is having trouble hearing me or understanding me. There's nothing about this that is uh, in the way. So you don't need to go buy some fancy headphones or headset or microphone to start to be able to have a meaningful conversation with your video conferencing. The, the microphone built into your modern computer is designed to be really powerful and great for video conferencing. So go ahead and use that with confidence. And this is what it sounds like with headphones or the built-in microphone. This sounds different the closer this microphone gets to my mouth. Again, sounds fine, no problems. A couple things to think about, the visual of this whole situation could become in certain circumstances a distraction. In most meetings, no big deal. If I'm giving a speech to 3,000 people or I'm on network TV, maybe I want to think about, is this an issue for me? On the other hand, you're going to turn on the news tonight and see somebody doing a remote interview and they're going to be wearing a headset and it's no big deal. So whatever you're comfortable with. One thing to really think about though is that as this microphone moves around, as you move around, it could be bumping into things that you're not aware of. If you're wearing jewelry or lapels or a tie, your jacket, something like that, a zipper, Sometimes this microphone can bump into things, and when it does, it creates sound issues. And if you don't know those issues are happening, that can be a real problem for you and your audience. So if you want to go with a headset like this, you might want to, in certain circumstances, just practice or plug it in and make sure that you've got clearance against your body so that nothing is getting in the way of people's ability to hear you. And this is what things sound like on my laptop using my AirPods for a microphone. Sounds great, no problems, no issues. Totally viable way for you to do video conferencing. Now, if you will be doing video conferencing on the regular, like every day or maybe multiple times a week, if you'll be doing important video conferencing, you're giving speeches or you're teaching classes or you are having important business sales conversations, things where you really kind of want your audio to sound great, but also you want to set it and forget it. You don't really want to have to be tinkering all the time with are my uh, Bluetooth headphones connecting and, and things like that. You might want to upgrade your audio. And a standalone USB microphone can help you do that. USB just means the connection that it makes into your computer. You plug it in and there's really nothing more to think about. One that I can recommend, you maybe have seen it right here as we've been talking, it's what you've been hearing me through most of the time today, is a microphone called the Yeti from Blue. I have mine attached to an arm and a fancy shock mount which absorbs vibrations. You don't need any of that. When it comes to you out of the box, it already has a stand already built onto it. You literally just set this thing on your desk and that's it. 
When you want to do some recording or some video conferencing, you pull it a little closer to you so it's capturing your voice. When you're done with it, slide out of the way. It's a no-brainer. It's a done deal. There are lots of different options, lots of USB microphones, lots of price points. This one is, I think, around 130 bucks or something. This one is really tried and true. It's very well known. You'll find a lot of podcasters use the, the Yeti. You'll find a lot of people on YouTube who do a lot of recording use the Yeti. So it's definitely one to check out. That's it. We have talked about some essentials so that you are ready for your next video conference, looking like a pro, showing up so that you can project your very confident and comfortable and authentic self without worrying about the technology. Remember that there's three essential things to think about. Your composition, how you fit inside the frame, your lighting so that people see you in the best way, and your sound so that people hear you in the best way. Remember that perfect is not necessary. You just wanna do your best so that things aren't getting in the way of your communicating and the presence that you have even across a video conference so that just like in real life, people are impressed and comfortable uh, being around you.